Hello, I'm Chuck Wooden, and I'm also joined by my co-host, Monique Melanson-Hunter, and you're watching The Veterans Corner. Thank you, Chuck. If you haven't seen The Veterans Corner before, uh, it's a show dedicated to our veterans, their families, and all those who support our veterans in this community. Thanks, Monique. You know, we, we've got another special guest with us, another special guest with us today, and uh, it is Mark Youngquist. Mark, welcome to the show. Normally, we re reach across when we had the, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. By the time, I, I, I can actually get over there. <laughs> um, it's great to have you. Thank you, know, you for we, having we, me. We, we've talked a lot on the phone, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's an honor to meet you in person. Thank you very much. Um, you know, Mark, Mark's a retired master sergeant. Uh, he's an author. He's a veteran. Uh, retired police officer. Retired police officer yeah. also. Yeah. Uh, and and he, he's got a, a, a lot of information to share with us today. So we're going to jump right into this. First of all, uh, your, your military background. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what branch, when you served? Sure. Um, I started back in 1969 with the Marines. Uh, spent a lot of time out in the Western Pacific, a little bit of time in Vietnam. Not, not much. Nobody's going to write about anything that happened there. Uh, from there, I went to the Marine Corps Reserves after my four-year enlistment with the Marines. I became a police officer in the town of Cheshire. Then I was hired by the Department of Energy, and I had a really great job that was boring, as you could not believe, but it paid well. So I decided I needed another challenge, and I went into the Army Reserves, and I was in a drill sergeant unit for two years. Uh, that unit did not get activated for Desert Storm, so when my enlistment with them ended, I went with the 143rd Military Police Company from the Connecticut National Guard. They had gone to Desert Storm. I figured I was going to play the game. I was going to be playing it for keeps. Yeah. I'm not very bright. <laughs> uh, I spent uh, 14 years with the Army National Guard. Uh, we got activated uh, for the airport mission after 9-11, uh, securing the airports and other security missions. Uh, we did that until Memorial Day of 2002. We came off active duty. And then February 7th of 2003, we got activated to go to the desert. Now, in keeping with uh, perfect military tradition, uh, a cross between uh, MASH meets Hogan's Heroes, February 7th, they sent us to Fort Drum, New York, to get ready for desert warfare. It was 38 degrees below zero and it snowed almost every day we were there. Uh, Fort Drum is on the eastern end of Lake Ontario, and the wind comes out of Canada, picks up the moisture on the Great Lakes, and dumps it on Fort Drum. Perfect simulation. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. Uh, so from there, we spent about 63 days, and then they shipped us off to Kuwait, which actually helped because we got there before our equipment, so it gave us three weeks to get used to being in the desert. Uh, cause it, it was just, it was kicking us. It, yeah. it, was, it was that bad. But one of the things that happened, and hopefully the cameraman can get this, is this is a picture uh, taken by uh, now First Sergeant Mark Puchinski of our unit. And it's us getting on the plane to go to Kuwait. And he happened to be standing in the exact right spot. The wind was blowing just perfectly. He had the camera up and he snapped the picture of our guide on going past the American flag yeah. as we got on the plane to head to Kuwait. Uh, we spent roughly three weeks in Kuwait and then we pushed forward on uh, May 9th and re remained in uh, western Baghdad for the next, next, the rest of the next year. We came out, or I came out with the last crew April 2nd of 2004. Um. And that was, uh, what was, what was the tour there? Was, was it a year? It was, uh, it was a year. Uh, and fortunately for us, we uh, got through our mobilization station fairly quickly. So the quicker you got through there, the sooner you got in the country, the sooner you got out. Right after we left, they extended everybody who's still in country in an extra 120 days. I don't know if we could have handled another 120 days. Yeah. We were. We were well done by yeah. April 2nd. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I know we had uh, a, a lot from me being retired from corrections. Uh, we had a lot of our officers that were activated. And we, 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 well, kept, that's, we kept that's, in contact with that's them. That's another thing. We had a good core of 
you know, everybody thinks of the National Guard, you know, the weekend warriors. Uh, we had 14 corrections officers, we had 12 municipal police officers, and we had seven state troopers. And a lot of our soldiers had already been on active duty for a full, full tour. Three of our officers had been active duty enlisted. So it, it wasn't like we were babes in the forest. We, we had a good core of experience yeah. going over there. A good core of people that are used to covering each other's backs. And, and, and living that life. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, you're going from college to the war. You, yeah. We had people, you know, going back to Vietnam. We had people that uh, served in Korea, uh, in Germany. We had Desert Storm people from 1991. So we had a, a solid foundation going over there with a National Guard military police command. Yeah. You know, it, it's, we always open up the show with veterans and asking, you know, what branch they were in and, and you know, when did they serve. And I just want to tell you, on behalf of the viewers, the crew here at the Veterans Corps, we want to thank you very much for your service. It was, it was an honor you. to have served. Yeah, it, it, it's an honor to have you here. Yes, it thank is. You. Thank so. you. Thank you. So, Mark, how did you, I, we, we have you on here because you're a writer, so all that service, how, how did it turn into a, a write, a, 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 like your career as a writer? basically, or a hobby, or I guess? I don't know if it's a career as a writer, <laughs> and if my English teachers at you know Cheshire High or the University <laughs> of New Haven ever found out that I wrote a book, I don't think they would believe it. <laughs> uh, uh. But when I came back, uh, I was asked to do veterans presentations at, yeah. at schools. And I would also run into people uh, who knew people in the unit, and I'd always tell them a story about that soldier. And not one of them had ever heard any of the stories of bravery or heroism or sacrifice or anything like that. Uh, in this one particular one I was doing at uh, Hillary Middle School out in uh, Moodis, we talked about this one really bad night we had, October 26, 2003. Uh, our unit and several other MP units were hit at the Abu Ghraib police station. Not the prison, yeah. several miles apart, yeah. two different operations and three soldiers from the 527th MP company of the active duty uh, were grievously wounded. Six MPs from Connecticut rescued them under fire, got them into the police station, start, started life-saving first aid. And they were able to save uh, the two young men, but the young lady who was hit, uh, was, she was dead on impact, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, but they didn't know that. The wound was so tiny on the outside, but inside the damage was... 223. She, she, was, she was gone on impact. Yeah. But they, they did CPR on her for 45 minutes till we could get her back to a combat support hospital where the doctor said, you know, nice try, but, you know, she's gone. Yeah. Well, I only mentioned one name in the presentation, and that's Rachel Boswell, the young lady we lost. She was from Wisconsin. And a teacher comes up to me afterwards, a young lady, and says, uh, my best friend was over there. You know, we go out to dinner together, our kids play together, we're best friends. She was over there, maybe you know her. And I'm thinking, okay, 165,000 people on my rotation, yeah. I'm going to know who this person is. And she goes, Andrea Cloutier. And I, it was like getting hit with a baseball bat. I go, remember I told you six MPs rescued yep. three wounded people? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I go, Andrea was one of them, and she got a medal for valor for bravery under fire. I didn't know that. This is her best friend. So I said, well, she probably didn't mention that the very next day, uh, a suicide bomber with an SUV packed with explosives tried to take her police station down around her ears. She goes, no, I, I didn't hear about that one either. And from the picture here, uh, you can see the soldier standing in the crater. And that was in front of her police station. Uh, the car got hung up on a barrier. He detonated it. He destroyed the police station and uh, quite a few Iraqi civilians out of her squad. Three were wounded, not, not very bad, uh, but she did a great job. She was put in for another medal, and the active duty said, no, nah, she already got one medal from the day before. We can't give her two. Politics. <clears throat> I was going to say you're kidding me, but I, I, you're right. Politics. It's, it's, uh... We had to operate under the active duty. and. We'd write it up, and it was there, and, you know, you're submitting paperwork, 10, 15 pages of, of incident reports and sworn statements, and it's like, yeah, no. 
from people that were never in country. Oh, no, no, these, these were all people in country. Were they? Oh, yes, yes, this was our battalion headquarters inside, but they were active duty, they weren't National Guard. Now, yeah. uh, the active duty was supposed to show up by the way the book is written, you know how the book goes, yeah. and then what really happens. They were shows, supposed to show up with their battalion headquarters, about 50, 75 people, three MP companies, of approximately 186 in each company, and they were supposed to get added one National Guard company of 186. They showed up with their headquarters, one of their MP companies, an MP company they borrowed from another battalion, and six National Guard companies. There were more National Guardsmen in the unit than there were active duty soldiers. Now, when they rotated out, because they had gotten there earlier, we got transferred to a battalion headquarters from the Tennessee National Guard, and all seven companies were National Guard. There wasn't one active duty soldier in that unit. It's a big changeover. I know we got questions coming up yeah. regarding this, but you know, the old days of you know the weekend warriors and no, no more one week in yeah. a month, no. no no more two weeks. We're still sending troops as yeah. even though things have calmed down, the active duty cannot go anywhere without the Guard and the Reserve. Yeah. Whether it's Air Guard or Army Guard, I uh, I don't and even the Marines I mean, Charlie Company down in Plainville and the truck company down in yep. New Haven, they're getting, their, they're getting their orders every few years. They're, yep. they're, they're still going. And it, it, it's, it's amazing the difference, and once again, we'll get into that. Uh, you know, the days of the movie, what, Rambo? Oh. You know, you know, yeah. but, you know depicting National Guardsmen is, is you, know, you know, the Barney Feist. Yes. Uh, yes. Th those days are long gone. Uh, and, and actually, it wasn't fair even back then for them to be, you know, casted in that uh, that light. But there, the units won't jump ahead. Since 9/11, more than 6,000 guardsmen, air and army, have deployed from Connecticut to the war zones. Some of them multiple times. Yeah. Uh, so. It's, it's, it's not your grandfather's no. National Guard. No, just, just working in corrections back then. And when, when, when I was working, uh, uh, we had, that, at that point, it was the primary focus, I think, was Iraq. Uh, and yes, there, there were more soldiers yeah. in Iraq than Afghanistan. <clears throat> and and I, I know uh, many of our officers went back a number of times. Mm -hmm. Uh, as did, you know, National Guard troops from throughout the country. Yeah. Yes. You know, you, uh, you do presentations regarding the book. Yeah. We, we know that. What, what, is, what is the typical reaction that you get? Nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody, when I tell this story, and I've done it to uh, senior citizens, uh, veterans groups, uh, schools, you tell this story, and, and the, the reaction, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why, uh, but that was my motivator to write the book. I wanted to tell the story about the unit, uh, of, of what the young men and women of this day and age uh, were capable of and what they accomplished. We accomplished every mission they gave us. Uh, some of them were impossible, uh, and we still did it. And I wanted to tell the story. It's a testament to your to your heart, your your will, your determ you know, determination. I mean, it was. Uh, uh, they were they were great soldiers. Yeah. They deserve more recognition than than they got. Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of times too, they don't hear it. The public doesn't hear it, because really, when you go through that, you. I mean, just like uh, uh, the woman you were talking about, Andrea. The, uh, Andrea yeah. uh, she didn't talk about it, so that's no. how her friend no, didn't know. That's and, right. and most. Most of the soldiers that were really in it yeah. don't talk about it. No. That's true. The ones that tell you that you know we were behind enemy lines and they wouldn't let us take our rifles because they didn't want us giving away the position. It's yeah. like, okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the ones that really did it are are, are humbled by the experience. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the current word is or the current acronym or whatever you want to call it is PTSD. Yes. Mm -hmm. And right. people ask me about that. I said, well. If you went away to college in September and you came back in May because you had to work your way through and you, you just couldn't make it home except for maybe Christmas, you'd be a changed person. Yeah. This is a lot more intense. Yes. 
don't expect that you're going to be the same person coming back. Because if you do, you're fooling yourself. We had, we had an officer, uh, you know, getting back to, I mean, this is all related. Uh, one of our officers that went in, he got activated for Desert Storm. Now, that was a short couple-day event. However, it was uh, nasty. Short. It was an intense. Yeah. Uh, he came back and uh, was never the same. Oh, no. He was a medic. Uh, officer here, medic in the, uh, sure. uh, in, in, in the, in the guard. Uh, and and he, he just wasn't the same. And that was just a couple of days. Yeah. We've done a number of shows here on the Veterans Corner on PTSD. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I mean, we here, we feel as if it's very important to get that out. Um, and, and we'll continue to do those shows because it's it, it's it's prevalent not only just with, with with I mean law enforcement background, first responders. Yes, uh, it, it, it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. I had mentioned earlier that I was you know one of our past guests uh, today, um, therapeutic riding center. Recently, I've been uh, you know you know getting more you know learning more about horses and, and the therapy and and how. You know they, uh, they 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 help those of us uh, you know that have you know that have P S P T S D. Yeah. So uh, it, it's a real deal. Mm -hmm. It's a real deal. Mark, um, so we talked a little bit before we started the show, but what do you do with the proceeds from from your books? Can you tell our our? Well, I I guests? never I never intended to make money off of the book. I intended to tell the story. Uh, if there was a chance I could make money, fine, but uh, most of the proceeds have so far gone to Fidelco Guide Dog. Uh, Fidelco has provided uh, guide dogs for, of course, sight disabled people, but a number of veterans who needed guide dogs who lost their sight, quite a few of them defusing bombs. Mm -hmm. And the guys that were defusing bombs were the ones that were saving our lives. Uh, one day we had an improvised explosive device they had discovered. A uh, squad cordoned off the area. I wasn't there. I'm back on the radio in the, in the operations center. And they called out EOD. We're waiting for EOD. And now I'm starting to get a little nervous because time is ticking by. And the longer the guys are out there in a fixed position, better chance of getting hit. And I'm thinking, OK, the EOD guys are just, you know. For, for our viewers, uh, EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal. Yes. And I'm, I'm getting a little miffed. And, they finally show up, the guy suits up, and he walks into the bomb and they blew it in his face. And he didn't make it. And that still bothers me today that I was having bad thoughts about them. Well, we're getting on the plane to get out of Baghdad, and the load chief comes over to me and goes, hey, uh, you got some extra seats on your plane. It's your plane. I can't put them on there. Will you let these guys on to, to, to go back to the States? I'm going, I've got a plane. Yeah. This is all mine? Yeah. I'm going, yeah. I'm pretty sure the Air Force owns a plane, and anybody who wants to get on a plane and get the hell out of here, yeah. they can be with me. Yeah. So I'm going, eight guys. What unit has eight guys in it? So I walked over, and they're all older. Uh, and I said, uh, who are you guys with? EOD. So now uh, my, my, my heart is in my throat. I go, eight of you? He goes, well, we came over with 16. We're going home with eight. Yeah. So I found a, a, a nice dark spot on the airstrip and got myself back together. Yeah. And uh, we got them home. I knew a few when I was in the Navy, you know, EOD. Uh, you, know, you got EOD, UDT. Yeah. You know. All the acronyms. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, it, it's uh, it, it's not one of those jobs that you go to work and uh, and, and, and think that you're going to be coming home. It takes a special kind of guy and yeah. uh, or young lady now, and uh, these guys did it for the entire year and lost half their yeah. half their unit. Yeah. Mm. So, <clears throat> you want to take number four? Are you, are so you we four? talked a little bit about. Um, the function of the Army and the Army National mm -hmm. Guard, but what, what are your, what's your take on it, the importance in the U.S. military today? I think we've talked a little bit about yeah. it clearly, but... The, the, the active duty is just so small and has such little depth 
it, it cannot function anywhere in the world on a large basis without the Guard and the Reserves. Uh, you have the uh, Air Guard, uh, you know, flying missions constantly, uh, back after Desert Storm, during Desert Storm, and even uh, Bosnia and Kosovo, the Air Guard was flying uh, cover missions with their uh, A-10s, which we used to have up at, uh, up at Bradley, and now they have the C-130s, and they're flying all over the world you know, doing transport missions. Uh, we just had a unit come back from a NATO assignment for a year in support of NATO operations in Poland. It wasn't a combat operation, but it was a NATO projection of force to show our allies, you know, that we were with them, and they needed a guard unit to round it out to get the job done. And this is, this is happening across the board. Uh, it, the US, active U.S. military is just so small. They don't have large hospital units anymore. They have to count on the Guard and Reserve for yeah. doctors and nurses and medics, uh, especially the aviation. Uh, we've got so many experienced Guard pilots that they're actually more experienced in the active duty because they flew for so long. Absolutely. And a lot of them are airline pilots. So the, the Guard and Reserve are integral to, to whatever's going on in the world uh, to project our military power. I know about the Air and the Army National Guard. I don't know that much about uh, the Navy uh, or, or you know, other services, the Coast Guard. Now, we've got about three minutes left, and there was two questions, important questions, that we wanted to get to. If you want to touch briefly on it, we'd love to have you back. I, uh, I, I mean, really there's, there's a lot more information. Yes. I know that we can get to, we could have made this a two-part show. Yes, absolutely. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I understand you have many awards. Yes, I, I do, and there's, there's, there's two that stand out. Yeah. And one is an award, and one is a, a reward. Uh, the award that stands out that uh, is most important to me is the Valorous Unit Citation that the 143rd MP Company collectively earned for our tour in, in Iraq. Uh, basically, it's for uh, consistent and repeated acts of bravery under fire during the course of the year by the company, not just one individual, collectively by the company. And that stands out because of, of the unit's commitment as a team to get the job done and, and, and to be out there. And the, uh, the other is the reward. Everybody came home. Yeah. That's right. The Everybody ultimate goal. Home. Wow. The ultimate goal. I can't wait to read some, this book. Some kind of banged up, yeah. but they all came home. Yeah. It's uh, real fast. We've got about a minute left. I mean, actually, you want to take that? I do. So how, since 1969, how has the military changed in your eyes? The Guard and Reserve, you know, all through uh, Vietnam, barely got activated to go anywhere. Now, if you join the Guard and Reserve for six okay. years, you probably will do two years on active duty somewhere in the world in support of the worldwide mission of, of the, uh, the U.S. military. It, wow. it, it's something, uh, you know, it, as all of our shows, you know, it, it, it's this show right here was very informative. It was, it was touching. We heard, the viewers heard a lot of things that they haven't heard. Uh, that was the whole idea of yeah. the book. And, and it, it, it's, it's great. I mean, like I said, love to have you back. I'd love to uh, come back. We got, we got less than a minute. Uh, as I say, every show, 25 minutes goes by really fast. Yes, it does. Um, you know, you, you, I mean, our guests are surprised uh, by the time it's, it's over. Uh, but we definitely going to have you back. It was great to have you here, Mark. We've talked a lot on the phone. Uh, you know, we got a common, common uh, connection here down in Cheshire. Oh yeah. Uh, so, with that being said, I got 15 seconds left. So, thanks for being here. Thank you so uh, that's much, about all Mark. the time we have. Once again, I want to thank our guests for this evening for being here, and I want to thank you, the viewers, for joining us. I'm Chuck Wooden, and I'm Monique Melanson Hunter. I'm Mark Good night, Douglas. and we'll see you next time <laughs> in the Veterans Corner.